Uh, hello once again. Uh, discussing the PCMs again that we were uh, referring to before in the previous uh, video. Same PCM of a four that we were talking about. I wanted to point out a couple of things to um, take care of the confusion. First of all, as I specified before, the PCM has goes to different systems. When there's an arrow, that means it goes to a system. As you see over here. As you see over here. See the arrow? See? Pin. 36 and 35 goes to the computer for communication. As I uh, specified before, there are multiple connectors with pins. So you have to make sure to go to the proper connector. Now you notice... C-175, C-175, C-175. They all begin with the same numbers. So it's easy to make a mistake. So what you do is you have to pay attention to the last letter after the connector. You see this is a C-175B. This is a E. And this is a T as in Tom. So therefore, if I want to go to the computer data lines... And I want to find pin 36 to 35. I have to go to C175T, that connector. Okay. Let's say I want to find the computer data lines of pin 44, which is FEPS. I have to make sure to go to C175B because they can all have pins. All of them have pins. But you have to make sure to go to the right connector. Obvious, uh, otherwise, you'll be going to the wrong pin, measuring the wrong data. So keep this in mind. All, not just for Ford, all PCMs, ECMs, ECUs, whatever is out there. Always make sure first to go to the right connector, then go to the right pin. Okay? I hope that cleared up a, cu a couple of things. Now, about... <clears throat> Battery voltage to the PCM. That's the first thing you always check is if you have a problem, make sure the PCM is getting ignition power. Whenever you see ignition or you see the words abbreviated IG, it means ignition or 12 volts. So keep that in mind. It might be abbreviated. Here it's not abbreviated. But anyway, now we have to get 12 volts to this. A couple of things happen. We have a mass airflow sensor with Ford. They like to have four wires. Sometimes they have three wires. Mass airflow sensors. A signal, a ground, a power. With Ford, sometimes they like to have a signal ground and a ground and a power and a signal. So, and they always also intake air temperature. Mass airflow sensor senses how much air is being delivered to the, basically into the intake system the cylinders to the engine then the computer says okay seven grams per second eight grams per second which can be seen on a scan tool obviously if you put a multimeter you're looking less than one volt but if you look in idle and this can be the cause of many problems may I say airflow sensor at idle it could shut off you can have uh, uh, um, uh, bad conditions of um, not air no fuel Obviously, the computer controls the fuel by the air. So if there's more air, more fuel. Less air, less fuel. So you can either, you can shut down sometimes. Sometimes you can just uh, um, uh, stall. Other, uh, other, uh, other issues with that. Hesitation, anything with the mass airflow sensor. Now, I wanted to show something to you. And that is how we get the ignition power to this. So this is in one unit, one connector, as you can see. So if you go to the connector, you'll see six pins. One, two, three, four, five, six. On one unit, one connector. They go together. These two sensors. Intake air temperature, which is this, which is a variable, variable resistor. You see the little uh, arrow? That means the resistance changes. It goes down as more air goes through it. So now, how do we get ignition? Follow the green line. There are two fuses here. Hot at all times, fuse 7. 
Hot and run or start. Fuse number 24. Going this way, before we even get to this point, if you can I'll scan out, we go through a relay. So what else is new, right? That's why I always stress relays. Called PCM power relay. So once you see that, you know it feeds power to the PCM, to the computer. What has to happen first? Doing so many relays in all these videos. This is the number one priority. Then this occurs. So when we see this, we ask ourselves the first question, how do we get current flow through this coil? That's the first question you always ask yourself when you see a relay. Don't worry about the second part. First take care of priority here, then this will work. How do we get current flowing through here? Let's start over here. You see this fuse over here? Fuse 24 has current flowing through the red yellow wire. Goes through here. Also gives ignition coils relay. Also gives 12 volts to for the ignition coils. That's not a problem yet. A red yellow wire, still red yellow wire. We come in here. We call we, we see something called a PCM power diode. Terminal B, terminal A. A diode, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a one-way valve. This is called the anode. The little bar, the line is called the cathode. This has to be more positive than this for this to conduct. That's called forward bias. So let's say if it would be 0.7 volts more. If this is 1.7 volts over here, and this is 1 volt, I have a difference of 0.7 volts. That's enough for this to conduct. The other way, if it would be reversed, if this is more positive than this, it cannot conduct. Think of it as a one-way valve. Think of it as a one-way street. That's the best way I always... Um, explain the uh, uh, diodes a one-way street traffic can only go one way on a street it cannot go in reverse cannot go the other way <clears throat> this is the same principle same function it can only let current go in one way if current wants to travel back up here it's called reverse bias it can't under the right conditions this has to be more positive than this again if this is zero volt which is not this has to be 0.7. <clears throat> We're talking about germanium diodes. I don't want to get too technical. But anyway, <clears throat> what's the reason for this? You see this requires a positive potential here. What happens if you put the, 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 the battery in reverse, the, the cables in reverse? Guess what? So the negative is going to go to this one. What will happen to the diode? Well, if that happens, it's called reverse biased. It cannot conduct. And what does that do? If it can't conduct, look where it's going. Current flows into it on the red, yellow wire. Current comes out, the dark green, yellow wire. Then it goes to the coil on pin two, and it comes out pin one, which is a black wire. Where? To ground. So we have a complete path of current, fine. We now activated this coil. We now activated this part of it. Okay, fine. Let's go, before we discuss more about this, let's see the current flow. So we just activated this part, the priority part, th the control part, the load part now takes effect. This 5 is now connected to 3. <clears throat> if you look at the schematic, you don't see a connection for 5 to 3 because it's at its rest position. When this is activated, you see the dotted line, that means it's pulled in. When it's pulled in, 5 is connected to 3. Now current can flow to the other fuse. <clears throat> this was 10 amps. Only 10 amps for the diode and for the coil. This is 30 amps. 30 amps comes over here. It goes from here to here. Why? Because this is activated. Goes here, comes out here. Guess where it goes through? <clears throat> goes over here, comes out pin 3, dark green and yellow wire to a splice, 119, which is a bunch of wires connected together. It's like a node. 
goes to two fuses. One fuse goes here again. Same color wire comes into another fuse. Uh, fuse 20, 15 amps. So look at this. <clears throat> we went from 30 amp fuse, right? Down to a 20 amp, I'm sorry, down to fuse 20, which is 15 amps. Half of this rating. So 15 amps, only up to 15 amps can go up to, and guess where it goes to? Goes to the mass airflow sensor to give it 12 volts. And which is also intake air temperature. And it goes to, guess where? Ignition power. The red wire, the red wire, 35 for 36. How lovely. Two red wires next to each other. Ain't that great? So if you're looking for the red wire number 35, imagine if you go to 36 thinking it's a red wire. That's why it's always good to go to 34 if you can find it and make sure you're going to the right wire. How lovely, right? So anyway... We come to a splice, basically in a nutshell, this is giving 12 volts to the PCM, to two pins. Why two pins? Because there's a bunch of modules in there, a bunch of circuitry in there. Whatever is broken up, it needs more than 12 volts to go to one circuit, 12 volts maybe to go to another. We don't know what's in here. All we know is we need 12 volts to give it to the computer. Great. Getting back to the point that I, that I talked about before. <clears throat> I put the cables backwards. Instead of putting the usual cables of the battery cables, uh, the red one to the positive and the black one to the negative, I've reversed them. Oh boy. So now I saw, guess what happens? Now the negative is connected here, not the positive. What happens? <clears throat> what did we just say is the concept of a diode? A diode is to prevent wrong wiring so in other words if i put a negative here instead of a positive this cannot conduct why it's called reverse biased it will prevent this relay from being turned on if this is being prevented from turned on this is prevented from turning on if this is prevented from turning on what happens to our 12 volts to the ignition power to the chip it will not get it good so what are we protecting we're protecting Mass airflow sensor, fine. We can, worst comes to, we can change that. But to change the computer, we're preventing damage to the computer if you put the battery or cables backwards. That's the function of this. <clears throat> That's the way I understand it. So, again, <clears throat> excuse me. First, we start with the green. Follow the green. We get 12 volts here, 12 volts here. And over here, how much do we have a pin 12? A pin 2. Well, how much do we lose voltage over here? Maybe about 0 0.6 volts, 0 0.7 volts. So I want to see maybe about 11 and a half volts if it's a regular diode that I have to look the specs up. You lose around 0.7 volts on a, on a forward BIOS diode. Okay? Anyway, so we'll get 11, 11 11.5, whatever. Over here. And then here it goes to ground zero, a physical ground. Where is it? At front of right fender. Going through a splice to black wire. So it comes out black, comes out pin one, black wire, black wire, black wire to ground. Right? And we prevented this one over here also for giving us the 12 volts. So over here we should get 12 volts. Other side of 30 amp, 12 volts. 12 volts. 12 volts, as you see over here. Why 12 volts? What's the difference between here and here? Is there any difference? No, it's just a bunch of wire. 12 volts, 12 volts here. Why? Why 12 here, 12 here? Just a bunch of wire. 12 volts here at the splice. Why, how about over here? About 12 volts over here. If you put your voltmeter, actually, you're going to get less than 12 volts. But that's okay because this is pulling current. So you'll get maybe, uh, I don't even know, 11.7, 11.6, something like that. That means you're drawing current. That's good. You don't want to get exactly 12 volts or 12.6 volts. That means this is not drawing current. But anyway, besides that point, besides that point, how to understand how to read uh, this, again, same principle applies. We look at these things. We look what it's connected to. You see what it's connected to? Connect the output share, speed sensor, another speed sensor. Where is it connected to? 
TSS over here, turbine shaft speed sensor. That's what TSS is abbreviated, right? Where is it found? Transmission. Where is this found? Transmission. We always look what it's connected if we're not sure. That's the only way to read the computer diagram. Look what it's, if you're not sure, again, TPS over here, what are these four wires? TPS, I don't know what TPS stands for, let's say, right? Right? Throttle position sensor, we know that, but let's say you'll look at this for the first time, you're not sure. Come over here, come these lines, and guess what? Throttle position sensor. Where is the left center uh, uh, side of engine? Sure enough, these have to do with the TPS sensor. Okay? That's how you go about it. But remember, this is here to save this. Anyway, please go to my channel for more videos, how to test the relay in circuit, how to, uh, how, how to watch the signal of a mass airflow sensor, and I made a video about that. The signal goes to a computer. Somebody asked, if it goes to a computer... A signal, a digital uh, 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 signal, you have to look at the signal. Because if it goes to a computer, it has to be a correct signal. If you want to measure voltage, you're going to measure less than a volt. That doesn't mean that, this, uh, that, doesn't mean that the signal is not distorted. Whenever something goes to a computer and it controls air-fuel ratio from that, I have to look at the signal. It's not enough for me to just put a voltmeter. Okay, anyway, go to my other channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, which was my original one, and then my other one, Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto, to see my other videos. Thanks.